You know, it's not too often you see a rookie of the year break into a World Series champion club and really make an impact that's long-lasting and uh, is also remembered by uh, most fans. This guy was known in our, in our circle as the man with the beard. Not that it was his Indian name, but he had a really uh, dynamite look about him. And when he uh, eventually ended up in New York, he became a household name to uh, Mets fans after, again, successful seasons with the Reds. So today we're talking about the very underrated and for some forgotten Pat Zachary. Now, this American former pro baseball pitcher was an MLB from 1976 to 85. He was awarded the MLB uh, Rookie of the Year Award for his play in the NL in 1976, but he's likely best remembered as one of the players the Reds sent to the Mets for Tom Seaver in one of the most infamous Mets trades now referred to as the Midnight Massacre. Drafted by the Reds in the 19th round of the 1970 MLB draft, in six seasons of farm system, he had a 54-42 uh, record and an earned a run average of an even 3.00. He also had 619 strikeouts. Ironically, while a member of the Tampa Tarpons in 71, he received notice of his military draft eligibility for the nation's ongoing engagement in Vietnam. However, he failed the U.S. Army physical. Now, uh, a tall angler guy, a mixture of pitchers. Uh, the eventually uh, dealt starting pitcher Clay Kirby to the Expos for third baseman Bob Bailey at the 75 winter meetings in order to make a room in the rotation for Zachary. You know, either case of play him or trade him. Though he made his debut on April 11, 76, out of the bullpen, he was moved to the starting rotation shortly afterwards. On May 28, he shut out the Dodgers to improve the 4 0 with a 117 ERA. For the campaign, he had a 14 17 14 7 record, a 274 ERA, and a team leading 143 strikeouts in 204 innings pitch. Now, in the postseason, Zachary won the game two of the NLCS against the Phillies at Veterans Stadium in Game 3 of the World Series with the Yankees at the Yankee Stadium, both by a final score of 6-2. to two. Now, the Big Red Machine became the first team to sweep the entire postseason since the championship series was begun in 69, en route to winning their second consecutive world title. After the season, Zachary had a very severe hernia operation and was in the process of recovering when he and San Diego Padres' closer Butch Metzger were named co-winners of the NL Rookie of the Year Award. It was the first time in Major League history co-winners of the award were named. Zachary was also the first ever Rookie of the Year award winning pitcher to start to win a World Series game during his rookie campaign. The hernia, coupled with a sore elbow, delayed uh, Zachary's 77 spring training and denied him the opening day start. He did not pitch until the fifth game of the season against the Astros. He gave up three runs in his first inning of work. In the month of May, he was 0-4 with a 985 ERA. Following an 8-0 loss to Tom Seaver in the Mets at Shea Stadium on June 7th, he fell to 3-7 with a 5-19 ERA. Now, Seaver, meanwhile, was in a contract dispute with Mets chairman M. Donald Grant and requested a trade. On June 15, 77, Zachary, Doug Flynn, the, the future expo, Steve Anderson, and Dan Norman were traded to the Mets in exchange for Seaver. The Beaver County Times wrote that Zachary was a principal figure acquired by the Mets in the deal. Now, his poor season continued in New York as he lost his first two decisions to fall to 3-9. A four-hit gem against the Expos on July 10th singled a return to form for Zachary. Over the rest of the campaign, he went 7-4 with a 3.53 ERA and was the only Mets starting pitcher to post a winning record at 7-6 besides Seaver at 7-3. Now, Zachary was masterful to start his first full season as a Met. After defeating his former club on April 30th, he finished the first month of the 78 season, 3 0 with a 185 ERA. A complete game victory over Lasorda's Dodgers on June 7th improved his record to 7 1 and convinced Lasorda to add Zachary as the old sole Mets representative on the National League All Star team. Unfortunately, he did not appear in the contests. Now, on July 24th, the Reds came to Shea Stadium with Pete Rose entering the game with a 36 game hitting streak. Zachary held Rose hitless. His first three at bats, but Rose ultimately tied Tommy Holmes' NL record 37 game streak with a single left in the seventh. Four batters later, he was pulled in favor of Kevin Coble. Frustrated, Zachary went to kick a batting helmet sitting on the dugout steps, missed, and kicked a step. He suffered contusions in his left foot and left on crutches. He was lost.
for the remainder of the season. Now, despite the fact that the 79 campaign was also mirrored by injuries, Zachary was 5-0 with a 289 ERA before suffering his first loss in a season-ending injury on June 8th against the Astros. He will not return to the mound until May of the following season, but managed to stay healthy over the remainder of the 80 campaign. He logged 164.2 innings pitched, his most is a bit, and pitched well in spite of his 6-10 and record on the poor, the poor Metropolitans. His 3-0-1 ERA was tops among his Mets starters, however, but he suffered from a lack of run support. The Mets were shut out in each of Zachary's first last three decisions and five times in his 26 starts. On July 25th and 30th, Zachary shut out his opponent in consecutive starts. His streak would have hit three were it not for three unearned runs in the eighth inning of his next start. Now, when he shut out the Cubs at Wrigley Field in a 61 season opener, he then won each of his first three starts, but then fell into a five-game losing streak in which his ERA was 693 and opposing batting batters were hitting 330. His record stood at 5-7 and seven with a 416 ERA when the player strike interrupted the season. On the first day of the strike, Zachary's wife Sharon gave bare birth to her son Joshua. When play returned, Zachary once again suffered from a lack of run support. The Mets scored one run or less than four of Zachary's 11 starts in the second half. As a result, he went 2-7 and seven to give him a league-leading uh, 14 losses for the season, tied with Steve Muir of the Padres. Now, his first start of the 82 season, he seemed destined to top his opening day performance from a year ago. Once again facing the Cubs at Wrigley, he took a no-hitter into the eighth inning. He walked leadoff batter Keith Moreland, but then retired the next two batters and seemed to be on the verge of getting out of the inning unscathed. Unscathed, that. A walk to Ty Walker brought pinch hitter Bob Molinari to the plate with runners on first and second. He laced a single up the to right to break up the no-hitter and a shutout. The Cubs then went on to score four runs that inning, only one of them earned. Now, New York's manager George Badberger uh, used Zachary's boss to start a reliever in 82. He was 2-3 and three with a 2-11 ERA as a reliever and earned his first career save on August 15th against the Cubs. Now, here it gets kind of controversial. Now, during the offseason, the Mets traded Zachary to the Los Angeles Dodgers for D.H. George Orta. In his two seasons with the Dodgers, Zachary pitched exclusively in relief, with the exception of one emergency start made in the second game of a doubleheader against the Mets at Shea on August 30th, 83, as he held his former team scoreless for six, way, six innings before giving way to the bullpen. Sorry, I got confused. Uh, not the orange order I was thinking about. It's the other guy, uh, the other D.H. He was an uh, infielder. Now, he ended his first season in L.A. with a 6-1 record and a 2.49 ERA and returned to the postseason for the first time since his rookie campaign. He appeared in games 3 and 4 of the 83 L- LCS, both won by the Phillies by final scores of 7-2. In four total earnings pitched, he allowed one earned run and four hits while striking out two. Now, following an 84 campaign, he which went 5-6 and six with two saves and a 3-81 ERA, he was dealt to the, to the Phillies for slugging first baseman Al Oliver. Now with Kent Colby and Don Carmen already in the bullpen, Zachary's role with the Phillies was very limited. After just 10 appearances, mostly in losses, Zachary was released by the Phillies in June with no decisions and a 4.26 ERA. Unable to land a job with another team, and retired and went to the coaching. He later played uh, in the Senior Professional Baseball Association in 89 and was profiled in the book by Peter Gollenbach about the, the league. Now, Zachary also co- coached the San Antonio Missions in 1988. So, in 10 uh, seasons in the National League, 69 and 67, 293 games, 153 games, 54 games started, 29 complete games, 7 shutouts, 3 saves. Um, he gave up uh, uh, 1,147 hits. Now, uh, again, Zachary, that, that opening season, he was sort of like uh, Aaron, uh, like the Aaron Sanchez of the league at the time. We know Aaron Sanchez have to get a good thing. You can't call him a one-year wonder because that that the 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 dugout incident and the the Herney incident really hampered his career. He would have been a 10, 15 game winner every year. Like he had good movement. Like I said, he was a great pitcher. But you know, the Reds didn't really need much pitching with the big red machine. But for what he did that year. It was tremendous. So that's the story of the very underrated Pat Zachary. If you like what you're doing here, we're a Cincinnati Reds Big Red Machine podcast. Let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.